Israel and Amosodia. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Father. In the name of Jesus, Father, we rejoice that we are accepted in the beloved. Thank you for this another opportunity to minister to your very precious people tonight. And we rejoice that the word comes with clarity today. Veils fall off, clarity comes. Your people are built up, equipped, edified. Jesus is revealed more than ever before. And the knowledge of the glory of the, earth, of the Lord covers the earth as the water covers the sea. So we give you praise, glory, and honor for answer prayer. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer sees a powerful amen. Glory to God. Amen. Well, we, we, we want to quickly, quickly welcome everybody that is connected to this service tonight and is a joy to have all of you in the service. Lift your right hands to heaven quickly. Let's release our faith together. As we say these words, I am born of God. I am born of the world. The word of God is my nature. I do not struggle to do the word. I do the word naturally. Therefore today, I will understand the word of his grace. I will be built up. By the end of this service, I will never be the same. Never ever be the same again. In Jesus name and every believer says a powerful amen. We want to welcome everybody connected to this service by way of Kingdom Life Network, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, all of our social media community, brothers and sisters online. What a joy to have all of you connected to the service. We also want to welcome the Akwai Bomb State community connected right now to this service by way of Comfort FM, Excel FM, Radio Akwai Bomb, Inspiration FM, Passion FM, and Heritage FM. We're truly glad and honored to have all of you connected to the service. Do me the favor of inviting a friend, a family member, a neighbor in the neighborhood. Ask them to connect to the service right now on this radio station. Life is flowing through the airwaves. Our social media community, always an honor to have all of you connected. Brothers and sisters online, we are committed to this revelation of Jesus to this generation. So let's get to work. Let's get to work. Help me share the video. Share it in as many as 50 to 100 groups. Let's get everybody connected to the service. Let's cover the dark places of the earth with the fragrance of Jesus' grace. I also want to welcome all of our house centers here in Aquaibom State. Brothers and sisters, what a joy to have all of you in the house centers tonight. My goodness, we're going to have church right there in the houses. And we also want to welcome all our campuses around the world for being a part of the service brothers and sisters on in the campus it's what a joy to have all of you we're going to have a great time of studying the word of his grace glory to god grab your pen your notebook your bible and your phones you can be seated with your sweet smart self as we get right into the word of his grace <clears throat> we're still examining brother paul's unique revelation of identification in christ in Christ, which is the signature of the Pauline theology. Brother Peter, in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse number 15, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse number 15 says, at verse 15, not 16, 2 Peter 3, 15, an account that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom, the word Sophia, given unto him, hath written unto you. Next verse. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. So we began to examine the insight given to brother Paul, the Sophia, that brother Paul had you know, on the Old Testament. And we've been looking at this series from the beginning of this year, laying some foundations, and we have seen that the Pauline theology was the advanced teachings of Jesus Christ. Brother Paul said in Galatians, when it pleased God to reveal his son in me, which means therefore that the teachings of Brother Paul were the advanced teachings of Jesus Christ. And that is what we call, if you follow the last teachings I have done, the Numa Aletia, or the Spirit of Truth. 
In John chapter 16, verse 12, when Jesus was giving his last public lecture before he died, he said, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Next verse. How be it, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all the truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. So we said that the spirit of truth there is a Greek word, pneuma aletia. And then Brother Paul took it to the next level. And Brother Paul's Greek word for that pneuma aletia was apodexis. Now, yesterday we began to look at some very critical fundamentals on the subject of faith. The faith that Jesus taught and the faith that Paul taught. In the book of Matthew chapter 22 verse 36, Matthew 22, 36, we saw what Jesus will say, Master, which is the great commandment in the law. Next verse. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. Next verse. And this is the first and great commandment. Next verse. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Next verse. Next verse. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So we now said that Jesus demonstrated faithfulness to the law and the prophets. Jesus was faithful to the law and the prophets. We also said that the law and the prophets is summarized in love towards God, which is love towards all men. That the law and the prophets is summarized in love towards God, which is love towards all men. And Jesus demonstrated that. In Matthew chapter 5 verse 17, Matthew Chapter 5, verse 17, Jesus said, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. And then we said, Was Jesus faithful in fulfilling it? And we all agreed, yes, because the law and the prophets hung on what he did on our behalf. So we said, Brother Paul now is saying this act of Jesus is witnessed by the law and the prophets in the book of Romans. His faithfulness, therefore, the faithfulness of Jesus to the law and the prophets is what produced our own believing. And we said that word faithfulness and our faith in his faithfulness is the same root word but different applications. His faithfulness, therefore, which is his faith, is the basis of our believing. And you must carefully look at how Paul used it. So we said his faithfulness is what now translates to that which we preach, the message. And the message we preach today is called the word of faith or the message of faith. So his faithfulness, therefore, which is his faith. Look at Romans chapter 3, verse 23 and 24. Romans chapter, let's examine brother Paul. For all have seen and come short of the glory of God. Next verse. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. That is his faith. Through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Now look at verse 25. Pay attention. Verse 25. Whom God had set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. To declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past. Through the forbearance of God. And then we said that the propitiation... Was it our believing or his faithfulness? His faithfulness. So, it is his faithfulness. It is his blood. It is his righteousness. Alright? Now, 
Look at verse 26 of that Romans chapter 3, 326. To declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. That he might be just and the justifier of him that believe in Jesus. So can we say he that believes in the faith of Jesus. Okay. Just and justifier of him that believes in the faith of Jesus. So we now took time to establish that that word is very tricky. So we must be careful in how we examine it. Look at verse 27 of Romans chapter 3. Romans 3 27. Where is boasting then it is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. And we said the law of faith there. Is it the law of believing or the law of his faithfulness? The law of his faithfulness. The same thing he calls the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus in Romans chapter 8 verse 2 and 3. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Next verse. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. That is his faithfulness. The faithfulness of Jesus to the law of Moses and to the prophets. That's the law of faith he is talking about. That is the principle of Christ's faithfulness. Look at verse 28 now, Romans chapter 3 verse 28. He now says, therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Look at the next verse, 29. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. Next verse. Oh, glory. Seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith. 31 now. Observe. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yea, we establish the law. So yesterday we asked, how do we establish the law? By the faithfulness of Jesus. Because Jesus was faithful to the law and the prophets on our behalf. So Jesus established the law in his faithfulness. Which becomes the basis for our faith in what Christ has done. So that means the action of Jesus towards us is called faith. Now. We also examine something else that I want to look at very quickly. And that will be that there are two different kinds. That is, it is not two different kinds of faith. It is the same faith, pistio Christos. Faith in Christ or his faithfulness. Then the second part is faith in that faithfulness. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 makes it a lot clearer. Galatians 2 20. I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me. The faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So I live by the faith of the Son of God. Pistios, Hoyos, Theos. Those are the Greek words, the faith of the Son of God. Pistios, Hoyos, Theos. Now, that is his faithfulness, which means every time the action is with Christ, it is his faithfulness. So the work of Christ is also called faith. 
the sacrifice of Jesus and what he is doing in his church today is termed his faith. His own faith. Now, <clears throat> Philemon chapter 1 verse 3. Philemon chapter 1 verse 3. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Next verse. I thank my God making mention of thee always in my prayers. What is the prayer? Hearing of thy love and faith which thou hast towards the Lord Jesus and towards all saints. Now, brother Philemon received a letter from Paul. Hearing of your love which is your faithfulness to Christ's doctrine in your life which is now towards the saints see that next verse that the communication of your faithfulness that the communication of your faithfulness may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing in you which is the love of God in you to others Every good thing in you is the love of God in you to others. Now, what do we find in Christ? We find his death, his sacrifice, what he died for, what was his motive and his purpose, and all of this is summarized as his faithfulness. Faithfulness to the law and the prophets. So when we have faith in Christ, we have faith in his faithfulness to the law and the prophets. So yesterday we said a narrow interpretation of faith as is believing to get <laughs> is totally not polite. And is totally not of Jesus at the same time. Because it becomes very injurious when we use faith for the centurion, faith for the woman with the issue of blood, faith for blind Bartimaeus. Then we come to the church and now we want to connect that faith to the faith of Christ. That's injustice. That's injurious because faith for healing is exercised by all men. So to now make it sound alike with our faith in his faithfulness has become a disservice because our faith in the faithfulness of Jesus has become the doctrine that we have believed. That is the doctrine that we have believed. And you cannot say it is the same with faith for healing. <clears throat> now, this is good. So yesterday we concluded by saying, when Paul now says, fight the good fight of faith, he is talking about contending for the doctrine of Christ. So when Paul says, I have fought a good fight of faith, I have kept the faith. He is not talking salvation. What he is saying is, I have kept my fidelity to the doctrine of Christ. I have kept my fidelity to his faithfulness in the message. I stay faithful to his message. Just like he stayed faithful to the law and the prophets. He died. He was buried. He rose again the third day and today he is still, he still ministers in grace and mercy to all men who believe. So when he says, if we are faithless, he abides faithful. That's another tricky word. Alright? He says, if we are faith, faithless, he abides faithful. He abides faithful means that he has done what he needs to do and cannot be changed. So Paul teaches faith 
from an identification point of view. He teaches faith from an identification point of view. What Christ has done for us and our response to it. That is the summation of Christian doctrine and our attitude to it. Which is faithfulness and the faith, all of it in one single word. Pistis. The faithfulness of Jesus and our faith in that faithfulness makes it one single word, pistis. So next time you pick your Bible and you read through the word faith, always ask, what faith? Always ask, what are the actions being described? It will tell you which of the pistis or Pistio, he is talking about. Now, where does that lead us? It leads us to look at the words of Jesus, particularly when he was teaching. It leads us to look at the words of Jesus, specifically when he was teaching. So, Mark 11.22, please pay attention. Mark 11.22. And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. He tells his disciples, Have faith in God, or have the faith of God, or have the faith that God gives. Then verse 23 now says of Mark 11, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Look at the next verse. What therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe you receive them and you shall have them. Now look at how Jesus teaches. Now you can be so careless to miss the message. Because the message Jesus is communicating here is in verse 25. The post text. Put it up for me. 25. And when you stand praying forgive. When you stand praying, forgive. If you have ought against any, that your father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. So, unforgiveness therefore becomes the fig tree. And unforgiveness becomes the mountain. Jesus looked at that fig tree and said, Tree, no man eat fruit of thee any longer. And the disciple says, The tree you cause has withered away. Jesus said, Have faith in God. Whosoever shall say to this mountain, then he now says, When you stand praying, forgive. So unforgiveness is the mountain and the fig tree. Then he says, you forgive. If you don't do that, it's not like your heavenly father. Because your heavenly father forgives. Jesus advances his faith. He advances his faith beyond words to receive. He advances his faith like the apostles, then eventually he used it to love. He used his faith to love. He advances the narration. You will ask, what is he talking about? Mountain? Fig tree? Yes. He has believing. Then he says, that believing life is now demonstrated by love, which is forgiveness. 
That believing life is now demonstrated by love, which is forgive. Look at Mark 11, 25 and 26. Let's see how Jesus teaches it. And when you stand praying, forgive. If you have ought against any, that your father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. 26. But if you do not forgive, neither will your father, which is in heaven, forgive you your trespasses. That is how Jesus taught it. So the faithfulness of God, he says, it's not your, like your heavenly father who forgives you. If you do not forgive, you are not like your heavenly father who forgives you. Then he says, that is his faithfulness. The faithfulness of your heavenly father is that no matter what and in spite of what he forgives you. That is his faithfulness. Then he said, you must also have have that faithfulness. Have faith in God or have God's faith or have the faith that God gives. So, I believe in God I believe the gospel. I am faithful when I walk in love. That is the Christian life. I believe in God. I believe the gospel. But I am faithful now when I walk in love. That is the Christian life. That is his pistil. So, he advances what he said. And of course... The apostles picked that from Jesus. Then they began to say things like, add to your faith. Add to your faith. Somebody like Peter, add this to your faith. Add to your faith diligence. Add to your faith patience. Add to your faith. He, now, and everything that Peter listed is what Paul calls the fruit of the spirit. Everything that Peter says you should add to your faith is the list of brother Paul for the fruit of the spirit. Which means add to your faith the love walk. Love. Because the fruit of the spirit is love. Now, exactly what Jesus taught. Exactly what Jesus taught in Mark 11, 22 to 26. Have God's faith or have the faith that God gives. If you also shall say to this unforgiveness. Fig tree, mountain. Be thou removed and be thou cast to the sea. And shall not doubt in your heart. It will obey you. That is how your father functions. Your father functions by forgiving those that have ought against him. Now, so a sound teacher must be a sound teacher of faith, which is love. A sound teacher must be a sound teacher of faith, which is love. Not things. Not things. But love. You know, people talked about, people have talked about faith a lot for things. But faith is actually for God's love towards man and our love towards others. That's what faith is. God's love towards man and our love towards others. That will be the mountain and that will be the victory today. Now let's move. So, that will be his faithfulness. Look at the way brother Paul will now communicate in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 24. Please pay attention. 1 Thessalonians 5 24. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. Who also will do it. That is Christ's faithfulness. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 9. 
First Corinthians 1 9. God is faithful by whom you were called unto the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. God is faithful. That is his faithfulness in the death of Christ for us and in his service to us. He has called that his faithful high priest. Faithful high priest. In Hebrews 2.17 Hebrews 2.17 Wherefore in all things it behoove him to be made like unto his brethren that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest. Look at 1 John 1.9. 1 John 1.9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, he is faithful. He is faithful to forgive. First Peter chapter 4 verse 19. First Peter chapter 4 verse 19. Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. So Christ's faith is his faithfulness to the law and the prophets. In that, he fulfilled it. He did not destroy the law. Rather, he fulfilled the law. So when Paul writes to Timothy and says to Timothy, be an example of the believer. It is his teaching about the pistios of the believing one. That word therefore becomes contextual for Christian living. The word faith becomes contextual for Christian living. So whenever you see the word pistis or pistio, is Paul's mighty vessel that has numerous cargoes which you find love in the cargoes. You find ministry, but it has to relate with Christ toward us and we towards him. See that? Again, that's Brother Paul's identification and it's in Christ's reality. Brother Paul's identification is in Christ's reality. Please stay with me. So, when you hear the unity of the faith, this is what we have commonly believed. That is what Christ has done which is the knowledge of the Son of God. Give me Ephesians chapter 4 verse 13. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. One faith one hope, one body, one father, one spirit, one God. How does he explain it? He explains it by what Christ did when he descended and ascended. See that? That's the way brother Paul explains it in Ephesians chapter 4. That's the unity of the faith. And he said that having explained a lot about Christ's death, and the resurrection in chapter 1 of Ephesians, chapter 2 of Ephesians, chapter 3 of Ephesians. He now talks about this is how to walk in chapter 4, chapter 5, and chapter 6. So you see that? Soteriology, ecclesiology. Brother Paul's theology. You have seen that in his ascension, he now gives himself. He doesn't stop serving. Even when Jesus ascended to the right hand of majesty on high, he is still serving the body. He has not stopped serving. When he rose from the dead, he now feels all things to the church. So, the faith advances. 
you must advance the faith in your preaching and teaching of the gospel. You must advance the faith in your preaching and teaching of the gospel and the ecclesiology of faith. And then we all grow up into Christ. You must advance your preaching and teaching of the gospel and the ecclesiology of the church and then we all grow up into Christ. See his faithfulness. So faith must always be given its contextual usage. Faith must always be given its contextual usage. For example, Look at 1 Corinthians 12, 9, where he mentions the gifts of faith. When he talks about the gifts of faith, to another faith by the same spirit. Now, when he talks about the gift of faith, no doubt that is ministry, which is by the spirit, the same spirit. The workings of faith by the spirit. Supply of faith by the Spirit. The Spirit of Christ still supplying faithfulness through the believer to serve the body. Christ's faithfulness supplied through the believer to serve the body. So even in his ascension, he is still serving the body. He is still serving the body. You know, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, he says, If I have all faith, though I could remove all mountains, so it becomes ministry, the gift of faith, to remove all mountains. In Galatians 5.22, he calls it the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5.22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. Faith. Now, he calls it faith or faithfulness or loyalty. That ability that is found in Christ's death and resurrection that makes a believer constant and consistent in what he does. The fruit of the spirit is faith. That faith is the believer's faithfulness and loyalty. Or the believer's ability that's found in Christ. The death and the resurrection. That ability in the believer is what makes the believer constant and consistent in what he does. So every time you see the word faith, we look at the prepositions and we look at the pronouns. Are you still here? Faith in what? Faith of what? What is the pronoun? Who is the character being discussed? Whose action is being discussed? If it is Christ's action, then that is his faithfulness. You see that? So, if it is our action, that is our loyalty in what Christ has done. First demonstrated by our faith in Christ's death, then our love towards the saints. That will be our loyalty. Shown in how we stick to his message and his gospel in spite of persecution, in spite of contradiction, in spite of blackmail, we stick to the message. Now, then in Luke chapter 18, if the Son of Man comes to the earth, this is Jesus now, will he find faith in the earth? That is a rhetorical statement. That is a rhetorical statement. 
Look at Luke 18 verse 8. Luke 18 8. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the son of man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? Faith how? Then he mentions two people in the post text. One a Pharisee who says, I am not like the publican. Then the publican who says, have mercy on me. So he therefore calls faith, faith in his work. Which work? His work of coming to justify. His work of coming to justify. Which is faith in his faithfulness or faith in what he has done. So therefore, Paul's use of faith will be a combination of the four gospels and a bit of the things John wrote about faith. I must mention that John's epistles has a distinction from the synoptic four gospels. His epistle is different from the four gospels, the synoptics. In John, which he had introduced in John 1.12, as many as receive him to them, gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. As many as have believed on his name, again, on his name in the incarnation. Then in John chapter 20, verse 31, John chapter 20, verse 31, but these are written that ye may believe or might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And that believing you might have life through his name. You might have life through his name. Having spoken about believing and not believing, Thomas in verse 29. Thomas in verse 29 of John 20. Put it up. John 20, 29. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Look at verse 30 and 31 now of that same chapter. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, 31. But these are written. These are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. Glory to God. That's why he wrote this. And so, you have a heavy use of words for belief. And yet, we translate that into his epistles. So, what are in the epistles of John? 1 John 3.23 1 John 3.23 And this is his commandment that we should believe on the name of his son Jesus Christ. Did you see the connection? And love one another. Believe and love one another as he gave commandment. Did you see the way the theology is working out? Believe faith that makes you love. Faith expresses itself in love, which is the fruit of the spirit. Now, look at verse 24. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him. And he in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us. How? By the spirit which he had given us. Glory to God. So, he doesn't use believing here as a future tense. But as a past things. Rather, what he says now is that we should know. We have believed already. We have life. So now he wants us to know. Look at 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. Whosoever committed sin, 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. Because. 
Many false prophets are gone out into the world. Believe not every spirit. That is the one active word John uses. He uses it for false doctrine. False doctrine. In 1 John chapter 4 verse 15, 1 John chapter 4 verse 15. <clears throat> Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him and he in God. Wow. So having believed in his incarnation, in his death, in his burial and resurrection for our sins, he says... We have believed and God is in us today. Then the same John in 1 John 4, 16. 1 John chapter 4, verse 16. And we have known and believed. Glory to God. The love that God had to us. God is love. He that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. Oh, I love this. We have known and believed. Then 1 John chapter 5 verse 1. Lots of scriptures good for your saintly dignity. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. God. And everyone that loveth him that begot loveth him also that is begotten of him. So loving Jesus is loving God. That explains what Jesus said. Love the Lord thy God with all your heart. How? By loving the one he has begotten. So, the moment you have faith in Jesus, you love God. Whoa. The moment you have faith in Jesus, you love God. Are you following? Now, however, that love is now an instruction to love others. That love is now an instruction to love others. The love of God now will be seen in faith by you loving other people. And John almost uses the same style Paul uses. Look at 1 John chapter 5 verse 2 and 3. 1 John chapter 5 verse 2 and 3. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God. <laughs> Did you see that? By this we know that we love the children of God. How? When we love God and keep his commandments. Verse 3. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. This time it means to love one another. Look at verse 4. Same chapter. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world. Even our faith. This is the victory. So our faith will be what? Identification with what he has done. Identification with what he has done towards our faith in him. And definitely our life in that faith. Towards our faith in him and our life in that faith. Our life in that faith that we have in Christ has overcome the world. Our, our, our life in that faith has overcome the world. Because he's talking about the flesh and the world. The love of God overcomes the world. God's love toward us and our love toward others overcomes the world. That's what he means. Then look at verse 5. Oh, who is he that overcometh the world? Who is he that overcometh the world? 
But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Whoa. Now look at verse 10. 1 John 5, 10. He that believeth on the Son of God had the witness in himself. He that believeth not God he that believed not God had made him a liar. He that believed not God had made him a liar because he believed not the record that God gave his son. Next verse. And this is the record. Glory to God. And this is the record that God had given. He will not give. He had given to us eternal life. And this life is in his son. Glory to God. Next verse. Woo! He that has the son hath life. And he that hath not the son of God hath not life. Next verse. These things, did you see that the epistles now? These things have I written unto you that believe. You have already believed on the name of the Son of God from the four Gospels. But I am writing this one now that you may know. You have already believed, but now this is written that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. Next verse. And this is the confidence. Glory to God. This is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Next verse. Ooh. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. That you may know that you have and that believing past. So this is what John was talking about. This is what John was talking about. Look at verse 16 of that same chapter. If any man see his brother sin a sin which is not unto death, he shall ask and he shall give him life. For them that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death. I do not say that he shall pray for it. Next verse. All unrighteousness is sin. And there is a sin not unto death. Next verse. We know that whatsoever is born of God sinneth not. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself. And that wicked one toucheth him not. Actually it should be he that is begotten of God himself keep. And that wicked one toucheth him not. Next verse. And we know that we are of God. And the whole world lieth in wickedness. Next verse. And we know that the Son of God is come and had given us an understanding that we may know him that is true and we are in him that is true even in his Son Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Somebody shall glory. So obviously he is talking about the same truth. God's love toward us is called eternal life. The death of his son is the cleansing of our sin. Then he says the same way the man that is born of God can reproduce that in his everyday life. So when he talks about the sin unto death, is basically not walking in love. The sin unto death is basically not walking in love. When you do not walk in love, you give room to the operation of antichrist conduct to express itself through you. Basically, when a man is not walking in love. But this is the record. This is a record that God has given us life. And this life is in his son. He that has the son has life. Oh, glory to God. Somebody blessed tonight. Now, so 
we have seen the polite theology, how he deals with God's love, faith, God's love expressed through the believer. My faith in the faithfulness of Jesus and that faith in the faithfulness of Jesus becomes my love walk towards others. That's the life of God. And that's the way Jesus taught it. That's the way Jesus taught faith. And that's the way the apostles all taught faith. No apostle taught faith for believing for things. All of them taught faith expressed in our love walk. Faith that walketh by love. Glory to God. Get on your feet. Let's pray tonight. Whoa, I'm excited, I tell you. Father, we pray for everybody tonight under the sound of my voice that this revelation grows big on your inside until nothing else matters. Life like never before. Life like never before. The life of God finds expression through you. The love of God finds expression through you to others. And in the name of Jesus, the evil one touches you not. The devil touches you not. You are far from oppression. The devil touches you not. In the name of Jesus, you are kept in the love of God. Thank you, Father. Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. Praise your Father. And you listen to me. We're going to go into the prayer session right now. And every one of you are all going to pray together tonight. And at the end of the prayer, we will take up our offerings in the various house centers and the online community. The banking details will scroll and the radio audience, Mr. Michael Bush, will read the banking details for you guys. I tell you, we're having the days of heaven on the earth right here at Power City International Worldwide. All the campuses, the glory of God's grace is being made manifest. And tomorrow morning, don't forget, we're going to be live at 8 a.m. GMT plus 1 and 11. 11 a.m. GMT plus one. They are two services that will change your life. You don't want to miss it, but stay with us in prayer. And remember, we are still in our fast. Remember tonight, 9 p.m. to 10, we are still teaching. 10 to 11, we are praying. And tomorrow morning to break the fast, 5 to 6 a.m. we are praying before we come to the service. Guys, these are the best days to be alive on the earth. Can we celebrate with a shout before we pray? Glory! Woo! I tell you, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God forevermore. Woo! I tell you, I'm excited. Amen. Amen. Ricando Shotoke, Le Praia Catosha, Teke, Le Pradeca, Padosha, Tele, Pradeca, Chatele, Capraia, Tahaska, Le Pranica, Toshe, Teke, Le Pranaca, Shatai, 